Welcome to this teaching. We're going to start in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, starting at verse 21. It's good to see everybody tonight. Looking forward to this teaching. Again, if you have your Bibles, we can go to Matthew, chapter 7, starting at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Amen. So this is Jesus speaking, and this is a very serious topic. The overhead of that is called, I Never Knew You. So I just wanted to share with everybody for a few minutes and just talk about that and what Jesus is saying, because that's a very humbling piece of scripture there. Because the people are saying, didn't we do all these things in your name? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we heal people? We did all these things. And he's saying, Jesus is saying, depart from me. I never knew you. It's very sad that people can sometimes have a gifting on their life. And because they have a gifting, they believe that's God's approval on them. So there are actually people that could be living in sin or really do not have a deep relationship with the Father, but they have a gifting on their life and they take that that that's the approval that they have, that God is okay with what they're doing. The key that we want to be doing as Christians, and if you're a new believer or have been a believer for 20 years, we want to stay in relationship with their Heavenly Father. It is imperative. We want to stay in the Word of God. We want to stay in communion with Jesus and talk to Him, talk to our Heavenly Father, and stay in relationship with Him. In Matthew 6.33, it really clears up all of this. Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So as long as we are seeking first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added to us. If we're looking to get houses, more money, a nicer car, all these things are great. And the Lord truly does want Christians to be blessed. A lot of people think that it's actually a virtue to be in poverty. I want to tell you right now, poverty is not a virtue. That's part of the curse to be in poverty. God actually wants you blessed. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow to it. That's in Proverbs 10.22, I believe. God wants us blessed. He wants us healthy. He wants us whole. He wants everything restored. It is so important to know that we have a good Father. Our Heavenly Father loves us. He is a good father, and what good father would not want their child to have the best? He wants us to have the best, and he wants us blessed. And it all comes from right relationship with her Heavenly Father. So I just wanted to touch base with everybody for a little bit during the space that we're doing. You know, read that whole, read all of uh, Matthew chapter 7. That, that's a great 
everything in there is wonderful. If you want to go back, I would actually say read uh, Matthew 5, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. I mean, they're all powerful, powerful things of Scripture in there with it. So like I said, always make sure that you are seeking God first. When you are seeking Him, the blessings are going to be a byproduct in it. Keep your focus on what God is doing, what He is doing in your life. Remain in a place of thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving and praise. Thank Him for what you have. Thank Him for who He is. Praise Him for who He is. Praise Him for what He's done in your life in the past. Thank Him for what He's doing in your life now. Thank you for the good things that He's going to be doing for you in the future. Praise and thanksgiving will get you so far in life. And it's just an imperative key. You stay in His Word. Do what Jesus is telling you to do. Seek Him. Seek His kingdom. Have a heart for the Father, have a heart for His people, have a heart for the world. Start going out and telling others about how good our Heavenly Father is. Start going up to people and telling them how much Jesus loves them and, and that He has a wonderful plan for their life. And do these things out of your love for Jesus. Don't do it because you feel like you have to. Do it because you want to. You should be so overwhelmed by the love and the grace of our Heavenly Father that the natural byproduct is that you can't keep your mouth quiet to not tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and what He's done in your life. So I hope this short teaching helped you tonight. Or whenever you do watch it, feel free to you know write your comments in. Share it with friends and family. Gina's going to be back real soon. To, she's got some really good stuff that the Lord's put on her heart. But we just want to stay, uh, just stay in touch with everybody while we're doing this fast. And just giving you some scripture. Giving you some good solid gold nuggets in your Christian walk. And we just want you to know we're proud of you. And we love you. And we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you have never given your life to the Lord, this would be the best time ever to do it. So just if you want to pray this, it's just a simple prayer, a prayer of salvation. If you've never done this, or if you were once on fire for the Lord and you've grown cold, and you just want to get, give your life fully in during these times, you just repeat the simple prayer after me. And they're much more than just words. When you're saying this from your heart, God knows the heart. Man looks on the outside, God looks at the heart. So he knows your heart motive in it, and he knows when you're serious. I said that the last teaching, a quote we love, when you mean business with God, God will always mean business with you. So we bless you, we love you in Jesus' name. And just pray this after me. Heavenly Father, I give my life to you. I turn my back on sin and I turn my heart to you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Wash me, cleanse me, make me clean. Holy Spirit, Come into my life. Thank you for transforming me. Thank you that today I am forgiven and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys and we'll see you really soon. Be blessed.